No fear exists where his love is. Rather, perfect love gets rid of fear because fear involves punishment. The person who lives in fear doesn't have perfect love. Now that's just the black ink on the page. What does that really mean to, to me when I'm in a situation where I'm feeling afraid? It usually comes from this sense that I need to protect myself. I need to look after my rights. I need to make sure that I'm looked after. I need to make sure that this bad thing doesn't happen to me. I believe that the message of the cross is to give my life away. And if I can somehow mysteriously rely on the love of God rather than my own sense of fear, then I will be free to move ahead. I'll be free to make uh, the right choice and hopefully be used powerfully by God. May the king live forever, I said to the king. Why shouldn't I look sad when the city, the place where my ancestors are buried, is in ruins and its gates are burned down? What do you want? The king asked me. So I prayed to the God of heaven. There's this little statement that says, I prayed. And the next thing we read is he's actually speaking really very, very boldly to the king. I can't imagine it being much more than a, God, help me. God, show me what to do here sort of prayer. It's the most important time that we spend together as a group of guys in Sonic Flood is our prayer time. We pray that, that God will prepare the hearts of the people that we're going to meet and, and speak to and sing to and sing with. We pray for freedom, to express our love for God. There's nothing more significant than being able to talk directly to the one who made you, to the creator of the universe. And I asked the king, if it pleases your majesty and you are willing to grant my request, let me go to Judah to the city where my ancestors are buried so I can rebuild it. The king let me have the letters because God was guiding me. Nehemiah goes up to the king and queen and asks them if he can leave his position as cupbearer and go back to Jerusalem and help rebuild the city, rebuild the walls, and even build a place for him to live in, and ask for wood, and ask for safe passage. And uh, I'm just floored by his boldness. And I think a lot of times in my life, I like to stay in my little comfort zone. You know, I, I, I don't want to bother other people. I don't want to impose, or um, I don't feel like that, you know, people, People think I'm cool after I tell them about my faith. Maybe God doesn't want us to feel completely cloistered and cotton wool wrapped and safe all the time. I think He, I think He puts us to, in a, pl a place of being somewhat uncomfortable sometimes to help grow our faith and help grow our resilience and our character and our reliance on Him. I don't find anywhere in the Scripture make sure you're looking after yourself. I don't hear that. It's convicting to me to read this and see His boldness and uh, not expect the same boldness out of myself. And, you know, I, I want to be bold for the Lord. I, I don't want to hold back. I, I want everything that God has to offer me. And I think abundant life is when we give ourselves completely to the Lord. You may not be jumping on a plane and going to Turkey or Thailand or, or wherever else, but don't, do not forget about your neighbor or, you know, the school that you're going to or uh, whatever community you're a part of, there is, there's a mission, there's people who need love right here. And you might be convincing yourself that, well, I can't make a difference, I'm just one person, I'm just here, and I, really, I can't make any difference. And we're here to tell you that you're right, you can't. One individual doing their own thing can't do it. Yet, if you take with you Jesus, the love of Jesus, and you do that in community with other people, you can make a huge difference. Making yourself available uh, to the Lord, to be used up by Him and used wherever you are. And like I said, He's got a great destiny for you, for us, and grab hold of the Lord and don't let go. And wherever He leads you, just uh, you know, be, be Him. Be light in a dark world. Be salt 
in an in a unsavory place.